So tell us a little bit about Black Label Media. I'll start with you, Trent. Well, uh, Molly, and, you know, Thad's been an actor, a producer in town in L.A. for a long time, and, and he and Molly, obviously she came from Alcon, Blindside, and P.S. I Love You, among other big hits, and uh, the two of them started talking about projects, and I come from it from the financial sort of almost lawyer on the East Coast for a number of years, and um, we sort of sat down and hatched out a plan to create uh, a company, a mini studio that could finance and produce that we could all work together. Um, finding, you know, director-driven, great stories, things that really spoke to, to us individually. And, and we were, um, you know, The Good Life was our first movie. So it's, I think it says a lot about the company itself. We worked with a uh, film director, Fleet Father Du, who had been uh, nominated for Masur Lazar, Best Foreign Language Film, two years ago. And it was, you know, I think this really signals the type of things that we want to get behind, the type of people we want to be involved with, and the stories that we want to tell and hopefully impact in, you know, the world. And Molly, you had sort of a personal interest with this, with The Good Lie. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the script came to us and sort of, we say, fell in our laps because we were really in the midst of starting our company. And um, we got the screenplay from our development executive as a writing sample for Margaret. And, you know, immediately just all three fell in love and said, this has to be our first movie. So, um, but I, I was um, really struck when I read it because I knew their story. And um, I only knew their story because my sister, um, Stacy, actually in 2001, met three Lost Boys who landed and resettled in Memphis, Tennessee, um, of all places where I grew up. And when I came home for Thanksgiving that year, I was in school, I was at NYU at the time, I came home for Thanksgiving. Joseph was at our table, this Sudanese guy, you know, and and um, very typical of my family though, because I have nine brothers and sisters, and you know, it's always an open door policy, so there's a minimum of 45 people at the dinner table any night. But um, but you know, I knew Joseph's story um, just from getting to know him, and he really became part of our family. We call him our adopted brother. Just um, my parents ended up sponsoring him uh, through college to get his degree as an engineer at CBU in Memphis. And he's now a PhD um, engineer and works at FedEx. And he's just an incredible guy. He's so smart. And, you know, all of the, uh, you know, Sudanese refugees that we have now become friends with really making this project, every single one of them are giving back in some way. Their, their um, you know, entire culture is, is all about education. And they're constantly reading and wanting to continue their education in every way because they really feel that that will save them, you know, and that will help allow them to give back to the Sudan. So it's really, um, it was this long, you know, journey, but I was so, uh, you know, I felt honored, but also a little pressure to tell Joseph's story, um, you know, with, with a delicate hand and make sure that he was happy and, and proud and that we, you know, did their story justice. And, uh, you know, so we invited him in. I actually sent him the screenplay when we were making the film, let him give us notes, and uh, he saw the film very early on. and. Gave me some notes then. But, um, yeah, he was here last some night. Some notes, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. He was great. That's great. Now, Thad, you're also an actor. Yes. So what kind of sensibility does that bring to your role as a filmmaker as well? Well, I like to think a superior sensibility. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it, it, it is good. That's what makes us such a good team because we all kind of come from a different background. Trent's a little more of the legal business affairs, you know, financial angle, which is great. You need that in everyday practice as a producer. Uh, Molly has just a general beautiful sense of, of um, material and, and she really understands the way that the day-to-day -day sort of operations work on, on a set. Um, I, I come from an acting background. I mean, pretty much my entire um, adult life I have been on camera and, and acting, and I love it. It's 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 part of who I am, but it also gives me uh, the ability, I think, to approach things sometimes a little more creatively and a, a little more compassionately from from the the acting side and, and understanding sort of the nuances of of how important a performance is and how important it is that that take be exactly what you know the movie needs because you know it's it's tough to recreate it sometimes you know in post and so. I, I look at, I'm probably a little more critical and a little more aware of the sort of uh, the performances uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, on, on set. Great. Now just talking about uh, 
wanted to just ask you a couple questions about um, your connections in Oklahoma. Can you talk about those in D.C.? I think you've got connections in D.C. as well. That yeah, I spent uh, nine years in D.C. And, uh, and so, yeah, <clears throat> that was like my uh, first professional job out of law school. So worked there for a number of years. We actually, it was a treat to be able to take this movie back there, which we did. We premiered it. Um, and did a fundraiser for the, the Good Life Fund and, and for Relief and Kakuma as well. Um, so that was, that was a real treat. I got to bring in a lot of friends that, uh, that I used to work with and it was really well attended by those in DC and I, I couldn't help but think about at 11 o'clock at night when the entire congressional invite list was still there, still enjoying the night. I thought how, you know, we really have something special here. If we can keep these guys who are usually in bed by 10 o'clock or uh, ne can never keep them out too late, we, we had them till the end. So that was, uh, DC, this, this was, a, I think it's important also that we had a lot of the NGOs and, and groups that are involved with these relief efforts there representing and, and getting involved in a good way. But DC's a great town. Great. And your Oklahoma connections? Can you speak to that a little bit? You you both are from Oklahoma. We're right? both from Oklahoma. Um, you know, as far as uh, this is a little bit different of an answer, but um, you know, I, I I've had a little bit of experience. My my father and mother have been part of a um, a my dad's an engineer, so he along with several doctors probably 12 years ago uh, formed this sort of organization um, to go over to Niger in Africa, and they drill fresh water wells you know, fresh water, running water for these local sort of villages that don't have it. Um, and the doctors go and they hand out medicine. So for years and years and years, Trent and I have heard the stories and seen the pictures. And although Niger is in Sudan, it's very close and the, the, obviously the communities are, are similar. And so it was really special for us to, to be able to go and, over there, but also tell a story that's similar to what my dad's been been talking about for years and uh, it feels good to be able to kind of you know uh, contribute in a way much like he does just in a different way um, and hopefully get some sort of exposure national exposure to to Sudan.